Oh. 
birthday this week. We also had another birthday, Anthony, who had a birthday this week. So they both turned 21 again. <laughs> so uh, the next thing I want to do, Bill, will you come up here a second? I'm putting Bill on the spot a lot the next two weeks. But we have an author in our midst, and uh, if you would, I will explain your book and open us up in prayer. The premise of the book is that God has, every person that is born on the face of the earth, has gifts, talents, and abilities within them that God has placed there when he created them in the mother's womb. And the dreams and visions that we have as children are kind of a billboard of what God wants us to accomplish in this life. And in doing that, as we get to learn to understand what our gifts, talents, and abilities are, and we start to work and move in them and learn how to flow in them and develop them as we grow up, then we will live our dream life when we are able to accomplish those things that float in our mind that we can't shut off, that keep rolling in our head all the time. And as we fulfill them, then we will be able to give God the attention that he deserves in our life. And as we have, take dominion over those areas of gifting, talents, and abilities, that God will uh, get the glory that he deserves in our life, through our life, and people around us will see the work of God in us and will end up uh, giving God glory by acknowledging what he's done in each one of us and the gifts and talents that he's put in us. Father, we just give you praise, honor, and glory for this day. We thank you, Lord, for the great things that you have in store here today for us. Thank you that the word is going to change us and make us different than when we came in. And Lord, when we leave this place, we're going to be prepared and more equipped, Lord God, through the word to see the work and the move of your spirit going before us in our life and preparing the way for us to be able to share the kingdom of God with souls. Lord, as your word comes forth, Lord God, let it come through clearly through Joel, Father God, and that everything you put on his heart would be expressed in a way that we can each understand and take it in and knit it into our life, Father God, that you get all the glory, the honor, and the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Our service is going to be led by the Spirit. And so before I get into that, I want to welcome my granddaughters are here, so, <laughs> and they're, they're partners, so I'm glad to have them in church this morning. Uh, our website, we are starting on it. Uh, we're going to come up with a better game plan today. Tout's going to come over to the house, and we're going to sit down and see what he knows, because I don't know nothing. <laughs> <laughs> but we've already got a menu page started. We've already got our logo started, so we're, we're making progress on that. So I need y'all to help me with the testimonies, I think. And let me back up. I, I, I didn't say it right last week. The Our email address is thefootofthecross2019 at gmail.com. I've got 2019. That's the year that we started this church. We thought we'd be four years old in October. It don't seem much like it's been that long, but we've been together every single week for four years now, <laughs> and we ain't killed each other. <laughs> so in saying that, uh, we've been working on the website, and Teresa, remember what I asked you to write down last night? Have you got the, can you read it? <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting everybody involved. <laughs> I don't want to forget this point because I was watching the movie God spoke just as clear as day to me last night. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. That, that, that part ain't no. The other part. I ain't got no Y'all need to come to our house. We have fun at my house. <laughs> we listen to each other very well. <laughs> I got the first uh, Yeah, okay. Y'all know that my theme scripture, that's going to be on our front page of our, our uh, website, but that's the scripture I want to go to. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. And in his heart, I told you in Greek, means subconscious. So however you think of yourself subconsciously is who you really are. That's how you're going to act. It's where you're going to feel. It's going to set your mood. It's going to set everything you do. So I was sitting there last night, and I was watching the movie. God told me that I told you we've been preaching on the Holy Ghost for the beginning of the year. And as a man thinketh in the Holy Ghost, and we're in the end days. And, and God told me this is where we've got to start praying in the Spirit more than we ever prayed in the Spirit in our life. Because what happens is my mind could be, if you were with me this week, it was in a very bad place. <laughs> But I had to come up with a, a good word out of the Bible and be a good husband and be a good friend and be a good employee all at the same time. That means I have to pray in the spirit a lot when people ain't looking. Because what you do in a private, God will reward you. I'm starting to get on a roll and see the Lord was already starting to move. That he'll, he'll reward you openly. Yes. 
So I have to, a lot of times we go pray and we pray analytical. Mm -hmm. We pray what we've read, what we study, what the circumstances around me. God, take them out of my way. God, cut that car, just cut me off, make them have a wreck over there. <laughs> Get them out of my way, I'm in late. We, we, we pray things out analytically in our mind as we think. But the Spirit bypasses my mind and takes me to the throne of God. And only Him and God understands the Spirit and Him because they're one. So what happens is now I take my thinking out of it, because as a man thinking, I bypass my own thinking and my own opinion, and I go to what God's will is. Does that make sense? So that's the reason it's important that we pray in the Spirit. We had a conversation last week, and I'm talking 110 miles an hour. Mm -hmm. <laughs> conversation with Mary last week about praying in the Spirit. She likes to pray and then pray in the Spirit. I said, I like to pray in the Spirit first because when I start praying out normally, what happens is I start giving my opinion what God, what I need the Spirit to be telling. <laughs> it's like he's my interpreter. Okay, I'm going to tell you what I want. Now you go interpret it to God. That's not the way it works. That makes sense? So when I pray in the Spirit, I'm bypassing my own mind and going to what God's Word is. And I'm connected back to who created me in the beginning of time before the earth was, was created. He had a purpose for me. And we're going back. And then saying that, let's see if I'm good to myself. <laughs> I was a lot to say. But I want to get that point out because it can dictate your day. Yes. It can dictate whether you're going to be happy or whether you're going to be sad. Mm -hmm. It don't matter what happens to you. If I have my mindset in the spirit and he's guiding me and I turn my life over to him, circumstance don't matter. Because mm -hmm. if I turn it over to him, I go to the back of the book and we win. Right. <laughs> we win. So we're going to go to 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 6 through 8. Now, that's not 6 through 8. I'm breaking it down, so I don't think I messed up this time. <laughs> I did it on purpose. It's King James Version. However, we speak wisdom of those who are mature, yet not the wisdom of this age, nor the rulers of the age who are coming to nothing. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery and hidden wisdom of with God, ordained before the ages of glory. In other words, let me tell you something right now. God likes hiding things. Because he likes seekers. Yes. He likes people who hunt them. He does not put his pearl before the swine. Mm -hmm. he, he likes to hide things in mysteries and for us to seek him and dig into his word. It's like a Cracker Jack box. Or remember the stereo, it's got the, the whistle in it you want to get when you're a kid. You pull the stereo all the way out until you get to the whistle and then try to get the stereo, but it never fit back in the box again. <laughs> but we try, he likes hiding things with us, so we seek him and hunt him. Does that make sense? So there's wisdom he's got hidden throughout our lives. Now we have to understand, just like your book, he gives us visions and dreams, and we give up on our dreams because it didn't happen we thought it should happen. Like Joseph. Joseph told his dream too early. But he put him through all the trials and tribulations. He had to go through tribulation, that's my word. <laughs> he had to go through he had to go through all this stuff. But what he did when he went through it, he still honored God in every step he did. So we have to understand no matter if the condition looks right or wrong, we still have to find a way that God gets the glory out of it. We can't mumble and complain. It's easy to do. Guilty. I mean, I, I'm guilty of catching myself doing it. But I have to get around people who says, okay, Joel, you, you can't do that. <laughs> and you want to tell them to shut up and go away. <laughs> you really, they need to be in your life. God puts people in our life for good and bad. We, we, we never, God puts people in your life that's bad. And I'm going to get to it ahead of myself. That are actually going to be your friend when you get to know us. Uh, God likes to hide things. Psalms 91. He that dwelt in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadows of the Almighty. So he, he, he wants us to get to the secret places. Yes. Everybody's got a secret place to go hide. <laughs> when something goes to you, you've got one spot you just go and just where you go meditate. Everybody, if you don't, go find one. <laughs> I'm say you go find one. You don't have one, go find a place that you just say, this is me and God. Mine is my car. I get my car, there's nobody around. I turn the music on and I just meditate. And I pray. That's my sanctuary. And I, I drive my car. The farther I drive, the more I spend time with God. <laughs> Sometimes it's good because a lot of people make you mad in that car. <laughs> Matthew 6, 6. But, but you, when you pray, go to your room, and when you have shut your doors, pray to your Father who is in a secret place, and your Father who sees in a secret place rewards you openly. In other words, if you're not getting rewarded openly, maybe you're not spending enough time in your closet. <laughs> Next time on your knees, pray. Because there's what sets the pace. 
Well, God never speaks to me. Have you ever talked to him? <laughs> have you introduced yourself to him? <laughs> have, you, have, you, have you opened up the door and said, hey, it's me, remember me? <laughs> See, a lot of times we want to blame every. We watch a lot of Christian movies, and all of them have about the same basic thing. They get angry with God. <laughs> Something goes wrong. And then God takes and redeems them and gives them the way. And then now God's the glory again. But he was the same God when he was in the trouble he was when he redeemed them. But we have to realize that, and that takes a mindset. So I have to get up in the morning, and the first thing I should do is, I, me and God, okay, God, before I take another step, I'm, giving you, I'm dedicating my life to you right now. Let me be a vessel and pour you out and not Joel out. Because Joel can be bitter. Joel can be angry. Joel can have an attitude. But Jesus is love, peace, mercy. Even long-suffering. We don't like that one. But long-suffering is one of these fruits, too. Yeah. So when we speak, when we are speaking heaven wisdom in a mystery, the Bible says kingdom is a mystery. Remember, the kingdom of heaven is like a man that went to the marketplace. The kingdom of heaven is like a man who went and found a treasure in the field and went and buried it back and sold everything he had to buy the field. God, when he talks about kingdom, he talks about mysteries. And his mis here's the funny thing about it. The mysteries you understand if you know what the, the theme of it is. If you go with what the kingdom of heaven like, it's five, if I'm not sure, somebody correct me, but I think there's five different illustrations he calls the kingdom of heaven. And none of the five are the same. Because right. he was speaking to two different kind of people classes. One would understand the marketplace better than would the, the sower. You see what I'm saying? The farmer would understand more than what the, the uh, businessman would understand. Right. We have to understand God speaks to us. He says, my people would know my voice. And what is his voice? When God talks to me, he don't talk like that sweet young man. <laughs> so we go like, you blew it. <laughs> what was you doing? I, that's when God speaks to me. That's like, that ain't God. Yeah, it is. Yes, it is. Now, he might not talk to you like that because you couldn't have it. But he knows that I'm a hard-headed rascal. You're going to have to get my attention. And so he speaks to me in a way he gets my attention. Sometimes I don't like what he says. That's not being anti-Christian. Uh, 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 Sometimes... Uh, correction hurts. Yep. But we say that he don't love me. No, he's correcting me because he loves me. Remember that song? You were worth dying for. Yes. He died for you. So he's not trying to hurt you. Yes. He's trying to help you. But sometimes we got so far out in left field that when he tells us get back into the thing, it's not comfortable. Right. Now, first thing, everybody know I did this. Everybody's going to point their finger at me. What's everybody going to say? Who cares? It's what he says. Right. <laughs> That's why we have to have an attitude, a mindset. It's not matter what you say, it's what he says. Yep. Because through him, all things are possible. Through him, I am a righteous, even though I'm like filthy rags. Yes. Because of his mercy and his blood that he shed on me. It's so simple, it's complex. We want to complex. That's what the devil wants to do, just confuse you. And tell you what you can't be because you're not qualified. No, you're not. I'm going to tell you right now, you ain't qualified. But you loved. <laughs> you loved and you were, he, he died for you, not because you were qualified. The man that nailed the nail in his hand on the cross, he looked at him in the eyes and said, I love you too. Yes. How many of you do that? <laughs> we're supposed to be Christ like. <clears throat> we got to change our mindset. Yeah. We have to learn not to hold grudges. And it's easy to do. Yeah. You listen to yourself, Joel? <laughs> I preached my sick. I just didn't hear <laughs> Verse 8, which none of the rulers of the ages knew for what they knew, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. Rulers of principalities of the earth. The rulers there are the earthly family. What he's saying in a nutshell, if they knew what they were going to do, if they knew that when he got on that cross, he was going to go and send to hell. Take the keys of death and of the sting of death and return back to the other life, they would have never crucified him. Right. They never would have done it. They would have leave him alone. <laughs> but because of their ignorance, we had, we had Jesus who was our redeemer. Yes. So a lot of times, the, the devil will tell you what the worst time we ever did was pick on Jesus. <laughs> when he became a man, that's the worst thing, that's the stupidest thing we ever done. Because they had dominion to Jesus went to the cross. The, the devil, now here's the thing about it. Now y'all listen to me and don't, don't take me out of context. Because this is just either right or wrong. You're either left or right. You can't be both. So when Adam sinned, he gave dominion to Satan. 
So Satan had all right to reign on earth. So the only way, because God gave man dominion for him to come back, Jesus had to become a man. That's the reason he always referred to himself as son of man. Even though he was God, the word in flesh, he was man. But he could not take the authority back to took all the sin of man on him and died because even God turned his face for him for a split second to all the sin because God won't look on sin. And because of that, when he died and he took it to hell and gave all them a chance, because nobody gets to the Father, whether it's the old saints, new saints, whatever, unless it went through Jesus. <laughs> so he had to get them on board to go there too. That's a long sermon, a lot of study I ain't going to go into. But he did that, and then he went back to the throne. Once he went back to the throne, man had dominion back. Because he left Christ, the anointing, the spirit, here on earth. It said, Jesus has sent. He said, he said, I will not leave you comfortless. I will leave you with a comforter. And it's the Holy Ghost and the Spirit. So when Jesus, the flesh, died, the Spirit, his Spirit went back as God. And then the man, the Spirit of man, the Spirit, the Holy Spirit that would dwell with each one of us, as it does, became man full of God. Right. Jesus was man full of God. Now, he gave us the Holy Spirit. When we get the Holy Spirit, he said, now, here's the thing. You got to understand. He said, greater works you will do than I do. He walked on water. He made the storm stop. He healed the sick. He healed the blind. He healed the lepers. He set people free from torment. Now, Jesus says that we'll do that too. Why are we doing it? We're being led by the flesh and not by the spirit. We have the spirit, but we set it up on the shelf because it's pretty. <laughs> I don't get it dirty. I don't want to use it. We just set it I can look at it. I can always pull on it when I need it. I'll keep it on the shelf as, as a back. That's my, that's my uh, savings account. <laughs> it's not my checking account. It's my savings account. So I can go pull it whenever I need it. But here's the problem. is It's been set up there. We forgot what the true power of it is because we ain't used it. I mean, you know, if you don't, if you don't exercise a certain night, you'll lose it. <laughs> If you don't exercise, I go in and bench press. I go in and I work out. And, and, and the weight that I can do, it didn't come overnight. Now, if I laid off four or five months, I go back in, try to grab the same amount of weight, it's going to bury me. I'm the same man. <laughs> I go to the gym like I always did, but I didn't practice it. It's the same thing with spirit. We have to practice. That's what that's a daily practicing. Do you know the first time, go back, Lord got so many thoughts going to my head. You remember when it came up against the legions? The disciples were praying over the legions. The man with the legion, all the, the demons in it. They prayed just like they had been healing the sick till they came to this one. Right. And they tried and they tried and tried. Mm -hmm. And then Jesus comes on the scene. Yeah. And what did the demon say when he yelled out? What are you doing here? Yeah. You're God. They recognized the spirit of God in Jesus when he walked up. The demons did. So when they walked up, he says, he said, why are you come to torment us? You're God. You don't have no things. No, no. Look again, baby. I got flesh. <laughs> I'm man. Then he said, bitter to the swine. Because they knew the man with God had power because Adam had come back to reign again on earth. Right. Authority was gave to him. So they feared and ran off yeah. and cast them off. So we have to understand, if we're not doing it, it ain't his fault. Right. It's our fault. But we live in a society, we want to blame everybody. Mm -hmm. If it wasn't for that woman, <laughs> I never would have ate that fruit. <laughs> he was standing there and knew what God said and didn't stop him. Right. Right. <laughs> Nobody wants to preach that something. <laughs> That's the reason man is the head of the house. Yeah. That's the reason man is the one who always takes the fall. It's not man per se, but we were supposed to be the head. Mm -hmm. We were supposed to be the leaders, and we didn't stop. So in saying that, if I see my brother, because we all once we're Say it again. We become brothers and sisters in the path. We call him brother. Mm -hmm. When we become brothers and sisters, if I watch you going down a path where you're suicide, my, my mom didn't like that word last week, suicide. <laughs> but <with> spiritual suicide. <laughs> but when we commit spiritual suicide, and I see you doing this, then as your brother, it should hurt me. Yes. And it should be my want to go over there and say, look, not cuss you out and tell you how stupid you are, but part of my friend, love the hell out of you. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm going to go there, whatever that hellacious moment is, I'm going to love it out of you. I can't beat it out of you, I can't force you out of you, and I can't condemn you out of you. All I can do is love you out of you. And how do you love somebody out of you? You just be there and hold their hand sometimes. 
You give them the word. You give them the encouraging word. You know what? You don't justify the sin, but you love the person. Because we have to understand we're dealing with spirits. We're dealing with the spirit. And the spirit of God dwells within you, but we can't do it. I'm getting all ahead of myself. Let me, let me get back on track. The, the last few weeks have been a lesson for you. Is, okay, the, uh, these last few weeks have been a lesson for you, uh, for potential in you. But when we're hidden in mystery, then we're on fire. We understand that in all these messages, I've been talking about a giant. I've been talking about this, the, uh, Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 16, 9. That a, an effective door will be opening up for you. But there will be many adversaries in your way. Yes. And we've been scared of the adversaries because they're giants mm -hmm. or our enemies. And I've learned that we should get excited when we see them because it's telling us that God has used us all up in this last part of glory and ready to take us to the next level of glory. So when we see the enemy, we should be rejoicing. Mm -hmm. Right now, I should be shouting like a man running all, <laughs> all over the place. But man, I've had some many adversaries come against me in the past two weeks. I'm, I'm not saying that lightly, and some people know it. I mean, I've had hell stirred up against me, and I know that I'm preaching what God has wanted me to preach. I know God is saying, this is the time for my people to stand up and take authority of who they are and know who they are. Quit playing man be pan be going like, I'm a nobody, it's just one. No, you're a child of God. You have all the authority that is given man to do whatever you want to. Well, they won't listen. Don't matter what they say. Don't matter what they think. You do what God's told you to do. And if you're doing what God's going to do, he's not going to move you. He's going to move them. And all they're doing is indicating that God is taking you to another level. So we should start. start. That's the reason. Okay, God's bringing all kinds of things. Wrong. There's, there's a story in the Bible where there was being the enemy was surrounding them. And they were outnumbered. They, and what God told them to do is to lay down your swords and start praising them. And they started praising them and laid down their swords. And the enemy got scared and turned on themselves and whooped their own selves. Because they knew that they were, God was in their favor and they thought they were outnumbered themselves. So when we start praising people, our enemies are going to start turning on themselves. So what is the key? Is it my mouth? Yes, it's your mouth. Because I can pull out blessings or I can pull out curses. So what I need to do is choose to pull out blessings and say, God bless them. Lord, I know, I know they're coming against me, but in the name of Jesus, I ask you to give them a spirit of peace. I give you a spirit of, 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 of truth and honesty to know that you are the reigning God, that I am your child, and no weapon form can come against me whatsoever, and they are going to have to move or change. Yes, yes. Well, that's, that's radical, Joel. That's radical. It's the truth. Right. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Yeah. I have to come to the conclusion, mm -hmm. I am a child of God. And if you try to hurt me, you come against the Father. That's right. And woe on a man that comes against the Father. Mm -hmm. I ain't seen one incident that worked. If you do something, find that in the Bible, show it because I ain't found it. <laughs> and I've read it six, seven times, at least. God lives, God lives in you, and you have been born of God, sees the only things God knows and thinks. God can only do in you, not the fullness of it, but the seed of it. Okay, this is my thoughts. God's principle is sowing the seed. Remember the parable about sowing the seed? Some fell on good ground, fell on rocky ground. And, and, the, and the disciples asked Jesus, can you explain this to me? And he basically in layman terms said, if you don't get this principle, what I'm fixing to do is not going to mean nothing to you. Right. And it's the principle of sowing the seed. Okay, sowing the seed is how God operates. You want to know how God, if God, remember I told you when God gave me the vision of this church, he says, I don't want you to sow a seed in them because I didn't sow the seed in them. Back before the beginning of the time. Yeah. And the beginning of the time, before he said, let there be light, he done put a seed in you before you even walked on this earth. So who am I thinking I'm going to put a seed in you? Right. God says, what I need my saints to do is to stir that seed up in them so they realize what that seed is and they grow a harvest of what I, their purpose is. Yeah. Just like your book. Basically, it's the story of your book. <laughs> so, great minds think a lot. <laughs> so we have to understand God does everything in things, so he's not going to put a apple tree in you. He's going to put an apple seed in you and let you nourish it as it grows. Right. Joel, what is that important? God even used his principle, when I get ahead of myself, on the redemption of man. Because what did he do? He sowed, he said, you know what? They're not getting it. He stood up there, Jesus the Father and the Spirit standing going, you know what? They're not getting it. 
Jesus said, I volunteer. God said, you know what? I'm going to sow my son, my only begotten son in here. God never intended Jesus to be the only son of God. What did he tell Adam? He made Adam in the image of him. Go multiply. But sin came in and threw that all to a rug because he couldn't multiply. Because Mary says, Adam, where are you? Yes. He was God. But he couldn't see sin because that wasn't the Adam he made. The Adam he made had done gave it up. So therefore, he had to send his only begotten son. God sowed his son on earth yes. that it would have a harvest of us. Yes. Yes. <laughs> We're supposed to be like Jesus. He calls us brothers. We've been grafted into the family. We have inheritance. We have rights. Nobody wants to tell you that. If I adopted me and my wife adopted a little girl, and we brought her out, and she took our name on, she would be just like our blood, whether she was or not. She would have the same inheritance of everybody else. And we're not adopted anybody. <laughs> we're not talking about. I don't get it. I'm not, I'm not sowing no seed there. <laughs> So, but what I'm trying to understand is that's the way God treats us. Yes. He speaks to us like he was spoke to Jesus on earth. What did Jesus do constantly? When he wasn't performing miracles and he wasn't teaching, what was he doing? He went off and prayed. Yes. <laughs> did he pray in front of everybody? No. When he prayed, did he pray a bunch of words? How many of you have been to a, a, a family gathering when the guy blesses the food and done got cold flies and can't have nothing to work? We got to eat it. <laughs> they want to teach you everything they know in that prayer before you eat. Thank you, Jesus, for the food. Amen. <laughs> but we used to like, Jesus didn't do that in front of him. When he prayed in front of a crowd, get up and walk. <laughs> he didn't waste a bunch of words. We try to pray all these fancy adjectives instead of get up and walk. You have the power to get over. So while you stand there praying these, all these big words, people going like, is it done yet? <laughs> Should I try to stand up now? <laughs> Should I, like the man that carried his brother in. What did he do? They worked hard to get that brother down in that room to get him down there. Yeah. And it was a crowd. They couldn't even get through the door. And when they lowered it down, what did he tell them to go? Okay, let me teach you what it says in John. <laughs> Here, uh, well, let's repent of all your sins. What did he say? Take your bed. Rise. Yeah. Here's the funny thing about it. You can get the enemy out of your way. When he walked out, he walked out the front door. Where all the crowd go? <laughs> he couldn't even get out. He couldn't even get in because the crowd was so big. But when he was healed, he walked and carried his bed out. Yeah. When you start, God starts moving your way, the enemy will get out of your way. We have to understand that. How many times you read that story? Nobody pays that attention. That's a major part. Wow, he got healed. He got he got his whole life changed right there. But the biggest miracle was the ones that stopped him from getting to Jesus was out of the way. <laughs> if somebody's trying to keep you from doing right, doing what say what God's going to do, He's going to clear him out of your way, and He's not even going to have to speak to him. The fear of what's going on will take him out of your way. Mm -hmm. You're not going to have to go take it, do the jaw away and slap him upside the head. <laughs> God's going to do it spiritual way and say, you know what? I'm going to make them uncomfortable. Yes. They're going to turn on self and leave. Yes. We, we thank God I'm a country old, just lay, basic person. I love the word. And I love the word so much, I take each word means something. Yes. I believe for every the, way back in the, uh, the first Bible I read, I didn't even know the, uh, when we call it periods, commas, and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. It was no punctuation. It just continues right. Because the word goes on and on and on and on. It don't never end. The word goes without void. Now here's what you got to get in your mind. If I am Christ-like, and I am in his family, and Jesus' word goes without void, so does mine. Yes. Good or bad. Yes. I mean, you had somebody say something hurtful to you, you never got it. Mm -hmm. They can come apologize all day long, and you might forgive them, but you never forgot what that person said against you. Right. And any time they even resemble what that what they even was touching, what they said, it comes right back to your mind again. Mm -hmm. That's why we're wired. Because words go on and on and on. They never stop. Sound is going off, bouncing off things. Hey, you want more bass? But more, make it bounce off more things. You get a deeper tone. 
That makes sense. First uh, Peter, being born, First uh, Peter one twenty three, being born again not of a corruptible seed but of incorruptible seed by the word of God which liveth and abideth in you. This is why I said I got ahead of myself. It wasn't a corruptible when he God built you, made you before time. It was an incorrupt, incorruptible seed. It was him. He was in you. So when he comes in us, then we become like Christ. We should be a harvest of his word. Remember the movie Eli? Mm -hmm. It's where they, 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 they had no books and they wanted to copy of the Bible. Mm -hmm. And they took, chased them all around. And they was trying to find the Bible. And they couldn't find the Bible. Mm -hmm. You know where the Bible was? He had it here. He had it memorized. Mm -hmm. We should be the word wrapped in flesh. Mm -hmm. When we get to the point that we know the word better than Satan knows, because Satan knows the word. When we know the word better than Satan knows it, then we have arrived in our full potential of power. Because now we are the word wrapped in flesh. Jesus was the word made flesh. That makes sense. Oh, you're putting on yourself as a level as Jesus. We are. The devil keeps lying to you, telling you ain't, but we are. We're not disrespectful. We call him brother, but he's also Lord. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? But he, but he calls us brother. In other words, I mean, know with your family, you, you, your brothers and, and your sisters together, y'all can say things back and forth to one another, but let somebody else say something. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and let, let Katie Martin, me and my brother, when we were kids, we fought like cats and dogs. And we'd be whooping on each other, calling every name in the book, not godly names either. <laughs> names in the book. And then somebody come up and take a side with one of us. And we all three would turn on him. <laughs> hey, I, I can do that. You can't do that. <laughs> That's the way it should be in the kingdom of God. We should be able to say things to one another, not worry about what they're going to say about us. Knowing that we're family. Hey, Bill, you know, that's wrong, man. But you know I love you, and we're brothers, and I wouldn't do nothing to hurt you. So now you're able to accept that and, and they say, okay, I'll weigh it out and see what it is. But if you've never known me, and I treat you like dirt all the time, not come up like you, stupid sinner. No, you, this is going to take you to hell. You going to listen to what I got to say? There's a lot of, and I have been with some big, big ministers that's on TV. And I went out to eat with them and been embarrassed. Because when it comes to the service, they were rude. They didn't tip. They had an attitude. My coffee's cold. Why don't you give me some coffee? And I'm like, I'm sorry. I, I apologize. And I told these guys, and I mean, they, they didn't like it. <laughs> I don't say, you just got up on a pulpit. Talk about the love of Christ. How love one another. How Jesus loves you. Forgive all sins. Come as you are. And call the girl didn't get your coffee in time. Now, you're going to fuss at her. You think she want to come hear what you say about Jesus? <laughs> you think she's going to want to come to church and hear about Jesus if you represent him? Yeah. We're represent, representing Jesus so wrong. Sure. Jesus was a man. Jesus hung around the sinners. Yeah. He, he fellowship with them more than he did the same. It was a church to group somebody. <laughs> so we, we, we got to change our way of thinking. It's not what we think, but how he thinks. Yes. Uh, John 1, 14. This is the Amplified Bible. I like the Amplified Bible a lot because it breaks it down. And the word Christ became flesh and living among us, and we actually saw his glory, glory as beyond, belongs to the one and only begotten Son of the Father. The Son who is truly unique, the only one of his kind, who is full of grace, truth, absolutely free of deception. Mm -hmm. So we have to understand that the God was sinless. What did I do wrong? Mm -hmm. She was trying to look it up and you flipped it on her too quick. <laughs> we have to learn to look as an adversary is our, is our it means there's an opportunity instead of being scared of that enemy in front of it it's opportunity we have a new opportunity God has taken us to a new level that is not a giving response that is a learnt and practice and exercise response you have to work on this heart. So when, when God says, Our Father with our heaven, hallowed be thy name. Give him glory. Thy kingdom come on earth as is in heaven. In other words, I don't want heaven to operate no different than earth. 
So what I do in heaven, I'll do on earth. So it's, there's no difference. But forgive me of my trespasses. In other words, all this is not going to work unless I learn how to forgive whoever trespasses me. So there are going to be enemies coming my way. And I'm going to have to learn how to forgive them or it don't matter if I give him glory or not. It's going to hinder the answer. Do you have forgiveness in your heart? When you pray for somebody, or do you really have forgiveness in your heart for that person? Are you praying out of just words? Yeah. Are you praying in the mind and not the spirit? Right. That's the reason I like praying in the spirit because what my mind tells me, God says, I ain't nowhere close to what I want you to do. <laughs> <laughs> Go back when David prayed. Mm -hmm. David, slay them all, Lord. <laughs> Kill them all. <laughs> and God didn't do it. <laughs> Because that's not his will. Because he loves them as much as he loves you. So we have to understand and learn how to pray in the spirit. And spirit is a whole lot different than what you think. Because we, we think what makes us feel good. We can uh, feel good, taste good, look good. Uh, and, 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 and put us at peace. And God says, no, but well, I'm going to put you in to make you uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. Because if they like you here, you're probably doing what they like. <laughs> you're probably one of them. Mm -hmm. I should stand out like a sore thumb. You should stand out as a sore thumb. Right. Together, we should stand out as a sore thumb as this church. Now, this church will be ineffective. I think God is taking us to another level. I think that's the reason you see the way I teach different. I think you can see the enthusiasm I, I, I have more. I, there I went to a love. In churches this time of year, they put preaching, Lord forgive me, but it's just the truth, more on the coast because everybody's on vacation. <laughs> Everybody's traveling, so they're not digging for nothing new. They just okay, we just get our service. We'll we'll have our Easter service and we'll do this service, and we just come, yeah, 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 make them feel good, sing a song, get them home. Jesus loved them. We all had a good time. God's bringing out revelation knowledge right here in the midst of us constantly. Is it because I'm just great man of God? No, I'm just this great man of God that wants to hear from the great man of God. <laughs> I'm hungry. I'm searching for the mysteries. I'm trying to find out what do you, what do you mean here, Lord? How many times you get somebody tell you to do something, you finally get frustrated and go like, I don't understand. What do you mean? What are you trying to tell me? God, that's not being blaspheming to God when you ask him that. He's actually going like, they're getting it. They're hungry. They want, they're tired of messing up. They want to know what I'm trying to say. That's what God does in our private time. So when we walk out, we're walking out. The enemy's not going to be in your private place. He's going to be in the public place. He's going to be out there where you, you think he's not supposed to be. He's going to be in your way to get you there. Mm -hmm. And if you, he's in your way, know this. God has got a plan for you. Yes. And know who you are. Uh, the fact that we should be a revelation to you. It should be a revelation to your enemy. Your, okay. okay, mine slow down. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I love my wife. <laughs> I can look at her and she'll be... <laughs> <laughs> So, see, God concerned my path. I got the best helpmate you'd ever pray for. So, here's what I'm saying. I'm also thought this for a minute. Here's what we have to come to to, uh, to understand. That enemy should be a sign to you that they're convinced you're able to do the next level. <laughs> and they're there to stop you to get there because they're more convinced than you are. Because I told you, the devil knows the word better than a lot of saints do. He knows the principles. Yeah. Remember, heaven has windows, hell has gates. Yeah. Windows is people, because God works through us. He says, you open up the windows, which means us. He will pour out his blessing through us, because right. he works through man, because yeah. he gave us dominion. But gates keep things out. <clears throat> so when they say many adversaries are standing in the doorway... That means they, they're convinced this dude or this girl gets through, mm -hmm. we're all in trouble. So we should get a smile on our face and say, okay, Lord, be like David. I, I slay the bear, I slay the lion. Yeah. And sorry, Philistine, gonna come down now. That's what we should be in our spirit, not physically. Right. I have to remind myself of that. <laughs> <laughs> Spiritually, we're supposed to be yeah. overcomers. We're, we should, there's not a place called there. It's always a place called upward. If you're in God's will, he's not going to take it sideways. He's taking it upward. Mm -hmm. Every advancement he is, he takes from glory to glory to glory. So we want to get closer to God. 
we got to get from this glory to this glory. Now my quest as a man is saying, okay, what do I need to do to get to this next level? When you're in school, when you're in college, what is what do I have to complete to get to the next level of school? And if you don't complete that, then I'm just going to go ahead and put you up to the next level. You have to go do it again and again and again until you pass that course, and then you can go to the next level. Same thing in spirit. We're not going to get to the next level of spirit till we pass what we did in this spirit. Now, when our enemy's there, if he keeps us out, we're always going to stay in this level. So my quest would be, okay, that, that every time I get to this point, that stupid giant's in my way. How can I beat that giant? So in this quest here, I'm learning, and I'm loading my gun. Well, the rock didn't work. The stick didn't work. That 357 might take him out of the way. <laughs> and I'm talking about spiritually, not physically. I, I've got to find the weapons that I didn't work. Okay, that didn't work. Because God's going to show me a new weapon that's going to be able to take that giant out of my way. That makes sense. I'm doing this as a joke and trying to make it physical, but really, we've got to find out if I, if I know that giant is keeping me from the next level, I'm going to get by that giant. Now, what have I got to do to get that giant out of my way? That's my quest in my glory. I've got to find how to get to the next glory. And I ain't gonna let nobody stop me from it. Now you have to, you've got to get to a mind. Paul says, I have kept my eye on the prize. In other words, Paul said, I have set my mind. I ain't quitting till I get it. Yeah. How many knows you if you wish you washed you on a thought, you'll never get it. Right. But if you make up your mind, you're gonna ask my wife, when I make up my mind that I'm gonna do something, get out of my way. I'm not gonna sleep till I get it done. Mm -hmm. I don't like processes. I like finishes. <laughs> I like to finish things. I'm hurrying. Uh, Joseph was in a pit. Joseph was in a pit to the palace. Uh, see, the story of Joseph, I told you earlier, I totally got ahead of myself. Joseph told his story too early. Sometimes you need to be careful who you tell your dreams. Better make sure that they're, they're in the same same faith you are, same tone you are, because they can make your life a whole lot more. They, be, they become that gate in your way. Yes. <laughs> they can be an adversary standing in your doorway. So you need to be careful. You know. But he did it. But even through that, every step he made, he made it, and he glorified God through it. When he was in a dungeon, till he was under that. And he got promoted all the way to the second command under Pharaoh. Now, at that point, I knew Pharaoh had raised up. He didn't know Joseph. There's going to be a time that that person that was in, in, your, in your life was just for a season. Yeah. And God's going to put a new one in your life to take you to the next level. Does that make mm -hmm. sense? Mm -hmm. So we go to Exodus 1, 11 through 12. Therefore they did set over them taskmakers to affect them with their burdens. And the burden of the Pharaoh's treasure city, uh, Phidon and Ramez, but the more they affected them, the more they, the most true grew. And they were grieved because of the children of Israel. They put taskmakers over them that controlled them. But guess what? Even though they were in bondage, did they stay the same number? They multiplied. So what I'm saying, even in your in your glory, where that the, the adversaries keep you away, God is multiplying you. Because when he came out of, out of Israel, out of uh, Egypt, there was a bunch of them. And they took all the spoils that they had lost. They left their rich. Yes. There they were in poverty for a season. Yep. And they were under task making or telling them what to do. But when God sent a man in their way, put an adversary, put Moses in their way to go deliver them, yep. they left with a multitude of people. They left with multitude, and they left rich. They leave peasants no more. Right. They had to have a new mindset. Yes. They couldn't handle it when they got in the desert because they never knew what freedom was. They've always had a taskmaker to tell them what to do. Yeah. They always somebody made a decision for them. Now we've got to make our own decision. Yeah. And they wandered around 40 years in the desert. Yeah. God operates in his own law, sowing and reaping when he was sent to you. Okay, I went through there. There's a difference in an inheritance. And a seed theory. Can anybody tell me what the difference is? Inheritance is something you receive from outside. The seed is within you. The seed is it takes work. Inheritance is given to you. 
See, I don't, everything that, I don't want to say, say Johnny Brown, because I don't even want to say mine, because I want my mom and dad to live to the 200. <laughs> See, Johnny Brown's daddy left, died. And he left everything to Johnny. Johnny didn't do nothing to get that. He didn't plant no seed. He didn't do nothing. But he inherited all the inheritance of the father. That's what we have. We have the inheritance of the king. We have his hair. We're not just a seed. The seed lives within us to get us more to people to the inheritance. He told us to go by the highways and byways and teach the gospel. Win the loss. Heal the sick. That's what we, that's the seed is with us. But we have an inheritance. If I live, if I abide in him and he abides in me, know this, he's overcome all the things in the world, and I have an inheritance. And that's to be in heaven. To operate with him like it was intended to be. Does that make sense? There's a difference in inheritance. When I have an inheritance, I can't do nothing to earn what he got, He has for me. Right. I can't earn it. Because right. I didn't do nothing to do it. Get it. Right. But by being in the family, the sons of God become like him and that he dwells in me, I get that. So what am I worried about all this stuff on earth? Right. I got the best 401k plan anybody could ever have. <laughs> My retirement plan is better than you can ever imagine. Because whatever I can imagine is better than that. So what am I worried to walk around with? Like a peasant mentality. If you think you're a peasant, you'll walk like a peasant. That's right. If you think you're somebody, you'll walk like somebody. How many knows when you put a nice new outfit on, you walk different than you do when you got your old baggy sweatpants on and <laughs> flip-flops? <laughs> you have a different attitude. You walk different. You present yourself different. Uh, Hebrews 2.11. Uh, amplified again, both Jesus who sacrificed and those who were sacrificed, that is a spiritual transformed, made holy, set apart from God's purpose, for all from one father to for for uh, even he died for you. <laughs> for this reason, he did not ashamed to call him brothers and sisters. He says because of that he is not ashamed. Jesus is not ashamed to call us brothers and sisters. Yes. That means we're in the family. You abide in him, he abide in you. You're in the family. Right. You have the utmost inheritance you could ever possibly have. So, while we walk around we're like, poor me, I ain't nobody. Mm -hmm. I'm a child of God. Yeah. There's Jesus, and then there's me. Yeah. <laughs> Whoa, Joe, you're being cocky. No, that's just what it said. Right. He said he wasn't ashamed to say it. Yeah. Why are you ashamed to say it? Yeah. I'm just, that's what the Bible said. <laughs> I didn't say that. Right. He says, He's not ashamed to call you brother, sister. So why are we ashamed to call him brother? Sure. We should be able to talk to him just like we talk to our earthly brother. Yeah. Y'all come and hear me pray. I don't pray, thee thou, <laughs> and all that. When I'm praying, I'm like, God, I don't understand. If I was you, I'd take him out. <laughs> Get him out of the way. You know I'm doing what you asked me to do. You know I'm getting up every every day searching for the word that you got for the day. I'm trying to be a, a faithful servant. But God, they keep getting in my way. I don't understand. What have I done wrong? Then he goes, you tell me. <laughs> God, that ain't what I asked. Yes, he did. He said, tell me. <laughs> so I get, it sounds like I'm arguing God. Because I have that good a relationship with my father that I can talk to him and say, I don't understand. This don't make sense to me. But I ended up the very same way Jesus did when he was a man. Mm -hmm. Not my will, but your will be done. Yes, yes. See, the man Jesus didn't want to go to the cross either. That's right. Three times he tried to talk God out of it. That's right. Three times he could call the legions, 10,000 legions, to stop them. But not my will. Your will be done. The flesh says, uh -uh, I don't want this. But the spirit says, he's got a bigger purpose. He's got a bigger purpose. Uh, Jesus came to remove the sin so that the Holy Ghost would live in every one of us like Jesus. Because sin and the spirit cannot, sin and the spirit cannot occupy the same spot. You, what are you saying, Joel? If you live in sin, he can't occupy that spot. <laughs> it's just that simple. Now, does that mean I'm a bad person? No, just get rid of sin. <laughs> What's the sin? I don't know. That's between you and God. It's not my job to tell you. I just tell you what the Word says. I'm going to tell you what the Bible says. The Bible says no. I'm going to say the Bible says no. Does that mean that no? That's between you and God. I don't like. I heard this one Christian that was the, the what was watching the news, and the woman, the first woman that was. Uh, 
electrocuted in Florida back in the early 90s, mm -hmm. over 100 something years, and went to Christian Lance. Well, I know, she said, uh, what was she said? We turned our power off at our houses so there would be more power so they can electrocute her. <laughs> <laughs> and they already got a spot in hell for her. <laughs> now, that's something you wouldn't want to hear in church. <laughs> a lot of us Christians say things just as bad as what the world says. That's right. Guess what? God loved her just as much as he loved you. That's right. So we got to be careful what we say. Because yeah. we're going to be judged on our words. I believe my whole heart. It's not going to be whether you, you drank, you, you cussed, you did this. I think what God, when you get on the thing, he's going to say, how much did you love? Mm -hmm. Maybe back, well, what do you mean, Lord? Let me tell you about this situation. This person here got in your face. Did you love them or did you curse them? I think that's what you're going to be judged on. Mm -hmm. Now, I could be wrong. But he said, I've done, come, and fulfilled all the law. Because you could. Right. Now I'm going to tell you, I'm not going to take these away from you, but I'm going to give you two simple ones because you couldn't handle these 666 of Bibles. <laughs> I'm going to give you two. One, love me with all your heart, mind, body, and soul. Second, is liking the first. Liking is that word, and that Greek word means exactly the same intent. Your neighbor. Yes. No, no, no. You just stop there. And your enemy. Now I'm going to be judged whether I love my enemy or not. How many can 100% say they love their enemy? <laughs> I try. I'm a work in progress. <laughs> he has begun a work in me. He just ain't finished yet. I'm seeking and striving to get there. I ain't there yet. I ain't going to stand up here and lie to you. But I'm seeking how to get there. I'm reading and studying. God, how do I get this giant out of my way without smacking him? I'm being honest. I'm just being real. A lot of people want to put up this... Uh, like I said, like some come into church going, how you doing? I'm blessed, I'm blessed, had a great morning. But they cussed all the way to church. <laughs> Chewed each other out, how stupid they were. They got a church, they put on the face. Everything's great. No, it ain't. We're trying, I, I, Lord, forgive me. But I'm tired of pretending Christians. We either we are or we ain't. I'm not telling you to walk on water. I'm telling you to walk in the water. Get the water on you. At least have some water. Get wet. Because <laughs> he calls you into the deep. It's time for us to get out of the milk and get into the meat and say, well, you know what? The law says no. Now, if you want to do it, I'm not going to condemn you. I'm going to love you. I'm not going to preach to you. But I'll, if you got a question, I'll tell you what the Word says. I'm not going to give you my opinion because my opinion don't mean nothing. Right. It's what the Word says. Uh, John 1, 29. The next day he saw Jesus coming toward him and said, Behold, the Lamb of God who taketh away the sin of the world. John was taking acknowledging uh, Jesus. I'm, I'm just going to get to, to where I want to get to the main thing. God's took me a different way. We have to have a different way of thinking. I told you, as a man thinking in his heart, so is he. That's, that's what God has drilled in me. If I come up and ask you this question right now, who was Jesus' friend? Who would you say? In the Bible, when he walked on earth, who would you say was his friend was? A lot of people say Peter. Mm -hmm. Peter says, you're the, you're the Christ. Right. You're the rock. And Jesus says, nobody told you this but the Spirit. Right. And on this revelation, I will build my church that the gates of hell can't come against. Ooh, Peter is the hero. <laughs> he realized he's the Christ. High five and all the twelve high five with each other. Got the revelation of who they are. Then just a few hours later, he says, what if y'all is going to betray me? No, they ain't. I'll stop them. And what did he tell Peter? Get behind me, Satan. See, Peter was thinking with the earthly plan. I'll protect you, Lord. I'll keep him thing. But Jesus knew he had a purpose. And it was the cross. So Peter became the enemy because he tried to stop Jesus from where his purpose was. Now who do you think his best friend was? I don't have a name in there. Go ahead. Don't be scared to say Judas was his friend. And like, oh, he called Judas when he was in the garden. Mm -hmm. And the soldiers come to get him. He said, friend, do what you got to do. <laughs> he called him friend. Because he, even though he was an enemy, a giant in his way, he was the end of the doorway to get Jesus to his purpose. 
Now, is Judas the hero of the night? No. Even we see God looks, God is wanting us to be led by the Spirit. And even though Judas had the wrong purpose, he still worked it out for the purpose of Jesus. Does that make sense? So, in other words, God can use that enemy to put you on the path, path of your purpose. Pur purpose. <laughs> One day, I'm going to talk better than Moses. <laughs> but what I'm trying to say, and I'm going to wrap this up, and what I'm trying to let you know right now, you have to come to a mindset where you're going. I told you on a map, you can have a map to tell you where everything is, perfect directions on it. But if you ain't got that little red dot saying you are here, no. it ain't no good. So it all depends on where you at. Right. Where are you at in your walk? Are you able to defeat that giant? And if you ain't, there's nothing wrong with that. You're not a bad person. Go study out how to. See, I don't think David just all of a sudden came out there and slung that slingshot and killed the giant. I think he was out, and when he's out with them sheep, he probably started off with a rock and a tree about 50 feet. He got missing a bunch. Then he got, I could hit it at 50. He goes, try 100. <laughs> Wait a minute, there's a bear coming out trying to get that sheep. Let's see if I get that bear. <laughs> Bam, kills the bear. So by the time he got to the giant, he done practiced what his gift was, what his proven gift was. Now, wait a minute. None of the people, his brothers, none of the Israelites, none of them seen what he did in the desert. <laughs> what you do in the secret place, I will reward you in the open. You see what I'm saying? So we have to learn. If that giant said, it should excite me. I don't say I have to be, be bragging that there's a giant, but I should get excited. But next step should be, okay, God steps to take me to the next level. He knows that I can do it. And his job is to stop me. Okay, Lord, in my private place, what I need to do. I can do all things through you, Christ Jesus that strengthens me. Lord, what is my weapon? What is my purpose? How do I, sometimes I might not have to fight. How do I sidestep him to get around him? My brother, we used to have a, a bull in the pen when we played football. And they would take JV and varsity and line them all up in a circle. And they put one in front of you. And you had to try to get by that one guy. As soon as you got by him, another one get in the way. Then another one get in. My brother was so little, when he got in there, they knocked him flat on his rear end. He'd get back up. they knocked him flat on his rear end. And one time he got in there, the guy was like three times the size. My brother just crawled on his legs <laughs> until his legs got through. And he went to hit him. He can't touch him. He got by him. Sometimes we might just want to crawl through his leg and get by on the other side. <laughs> we don't have to be great fighters. <laughs> we just got to get to the other side. God give me the knowledge. So now I'm telling you, when you see that giant, don't push against the giant until you know you've got your gun loaded. And you know you got the right weapon for the right thing. Don't be trying to think what, what Johnny did this and Billy did this. This is how they overcome it. No, how do I overcome this? Because God called me to do it his way, yes. not my way. Does that make any sense? So, in saying that, has anybody got anything they want to share? Any adversaries been in your way this week? <laughs> You've had an opportunity <laughs> to slay? Because <laughs> if you ain't, I've had a bunch of them. <laughs> but, I'm going to tell you this, in the name of Jesus, I will overcome. In the name of Jesus, I will be victorious. In the name of Jesus, he will get the glory, because that's the only way I'm going to get through it. I proclaim that today. I manifest it tomorrow. Okay? Anybody got anything? And we close the prayer. Father, we just come to you right now as we're getting ready to do it, dismiss and go on our separate ways. We just pray, Lord, that the words that were spoke to us just just fill our hearts and give us the courage to uh, to go out and spread your word. And uh, we just ask, Lord God, that you would be with us in the remainder of this week. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.